Hey everyone, I'm sharing my solo travel diaries from when I recently went to London, Copenhagen, and Paris. It was my first time in both London and Copenhagen, and I can't wait to share everything I got up to with you. I went right before all the fashion week, so it was a very chill time. I booked this trip pretty last minute. I knew that I wanted to do another solo trip somewhere, and these were cities that I had always wanted to go to, and the flights were pretty cheap, so I think I lucked out, but let's start from there. Lie down pod seats, I'm so excited. I had accumulated a lot of points with my credit card and I was able to book these business class seats. It was my first time flying business class and it was such a nice treat for myself and a great way to start off this trip. I had been feeling kind of burnt out from work and stuck in my life. I had always wondered, oh, like these are cities that I've potentially been curious about moving to. Why not visit since the flights were so cheap and get a taste for what the day-to-day -day is like. And that's why I started my trip in London. I feel like there's always been such a great like sustainable fashion scene there so many creatives and I loved that you know you could really see that like it was a very vibrant city but I found that London was so spread out like it takes at least an hour to commute anywhere which I know is really similar to Toronto and maybe that's why it's like it felt so so similar to Toronto that I was just like oh like am I really traveling I also stumbled across the vintage markets in Brick Lane which were insane but again, I think it was because of the exchange rate. Everything was just super expensive and I've been trying really hard to be intentional with what I'm buying. The one thing I loved about London too was all of the graffiti art and murals everywhere. I essentially spent my first day just wandering and walking everywhere. It was so cool to see all the markets since this was a Sunday and I biked over to the sustainable fashion pop-up as well, but they ended up closing early, which was totally okay because I ended up popping into the UAL, which is a school that that I've always considered going to. I don't think I'd ever go back to school or do a master's, but it was cool to see it in real life, you know, like maybe in another life. So far today has been a lot of walking and wandering. I'm gonna go back to Hackney. So see you when I come. I ended my night at this super cute dumpling house. One of the chefs is actually from Toronto and it was so yummy. And then I went to a spontaneous woods concert. So cue the clips.
that was a wild way to end my first day in London. The second day was another day of wandering and I wanted to go to more of a central area. So I went to Soho and Chinatown and my way to the Tate, the modern. And I loved my outfit this day. I wanted to check out a few exhibits, including the Philip Guston exhibit. We don't get as many exhibits in Toronto, I feel. So I always try to go to galleries when I'm traveling. Had to hit up Graffiti Alley as well because I just love murals and graffiti art. And then I went to see the London Eye and Big Ben. It was super rainy and moody, so I tried to romanticize it with some makgeolli by the river and then went into Soho and had some drinks and then I found the cutest bar. The next day was finally a sunny day and it made me so happy. I went back to the brunch spot from yesterday because it was so yummy and honestly a lot of the food that I tried in London was not great. <laughs> I went to the Marlebone area and Notting Hill area and it was super cute, just you know wandered and then I ended my night at a jazz bar. And then this was my final day in London. These are my Airbnb hoes, cute greyhounds. They were adorable and made my stay there so worth it. I had to grab a coffee because I had a late night the previous night and I went to some areas in Hackney. I loved how chill the area was in East London, but it was a trek to go back to Central. But I had to see the Tate Britain because the architecture of that building is gorgeous. Headed over to Saatchi Gallery, and I really liked this exhibit from like an up and coming artist. And then I met Izzy, who's been a long time online friend who also does sustainable fashion content. And then I ended my night at a vinyl bar before getting up really early the next day to get to the airport. And it was honestly so chaotic getting to the airport london traffic is terrible and it was so stressful but i made it on my flight and arrived in copenhagen i just got to the hotel look at my room i booked this with my travel credit look at this bathroom i'm so excited It's so weird to like walk through the halls of a hotel in a bathroom. I'm living my best bougie life for one night and then I'm gonna go back to an Airbnb tomorrow. My skin is always so glowy after the sun. to go to breakfast and then we're gonna go into central to do some shopping i was so excited to explore copenhagen like look at this woman's outfit there's so many vintage shops everywhere and everything was super walkable which i loved especially coming from london which was so massive and overwhelming i found this consignment shop and i think it's my favorite like the curation was impeccable and there were so many gorgeous items including this dress by cecilia something i can't remember but i was in love with this dress like there were so many danish designers that they had and it was so nice to just shop knowing it was all secondhand. I just got back to the hotel, checking out in 30 minutes, so I need to pack up all of my stuff. Oh my god, you girl is sweaty. She just so clean though. I just got to my Airbnb and the host is the nicest woman ever. Her name's Sarah. She lives in this like two-story apartment house in Norebro. My room isn't like the biggest room, but it's literally enough. For me, I just unpacked two, three outfits. I was staying at Villa Copenhagen. There were so many vintage stores dispersed through the entire area, but they were more expensive. This is her living area. So tasteful. This is like, just what like, apartments around. Let me go downstairs. Like, look at her kitchen. Oh my God. And then her little dining area over here, so cute. The second day I explored more of the Norbro area and I had some Danish pastries, which are amazing, especially the savory ones. But I just walked to a few more areas around Copenhagen and popped into this really yummy Vietnamese restaurant too. I highly recommend it. And then I walked back into Central to go back to Magnolia's because there were some items that I wanted to think about before buying. Found this really cute farmer's market too. I just got home and it's so cold. 
Thank God I bought this hat. We're home. I'm gonna make some for that. Have some wine after at some wine bars that my Airbnb host recommended up here in Nornbro. And then I might go back into Central after. I went out to a cocktail bar and two wine bars and just chatted with the bartenders to understand more of like what life is like in Copenhagen. It's one of the things that I love doing and when I'm solo traveling. I had a really good night because I made friends with the bartenders at Bird. And then the next day was my final day in Copenhagen. I feel like time is flying. I went to the super popular bakery. The croissant was amazing. And then I just biked around the city. So I was trying to get to over there. An hour and a half left. And then I have to go back to the Airbnb and take the metro uh, to the airport. I love Copenhagen, guys. How cute is this, though? This is the. Time to say goodbye to this room. My lovely little room in Copenhagen. My Airbnb host isn't home right now, but she's literally the sweetest. She like made, I think, my trip so much better. I just finished biking for like an hour and a half straight too, and my fingies are cold. <laughs> we made it. I just checked for bed bugs. We're all clear. Look at this bathroom. I think I really lucked out with booking last minute on Agoda because the square footage of this room was bigger than the others. But there's so much space for my luggages. Obviously it's wide angle so that it looks bigger, but this is amazing. It's so late. I'm so tired you listen to my voice. I think it's because I slept really late last night and then I biked in the cold in Copenhagen for like two hours this morning. So my body probably doesn't love me that much right now. There's been so much just chaos getting here and for tonight but there's also been so much good and i think that's why i love paris like when i was struggling to carry my bags down and up and down stairs like people offered to help and i think this is gonna save my life honestly i need to go to sleep it's just so i can like recoup for tomorrow and then i'll have a nice day tomorrow i don't really know what i want to do yet I have like a rough idea of things that I want to do while I'm in Paris. It's so nice to be back in Paris. It was exactly two years since my first solo trip there and I just love who I am there and how I feel there. And obviously all of the delicious food and things to do make it so, so fun. But I went and took my, you know, Eiffel Tower pics and just wandered about and had the best time. I came up these random like wood stairs. Because I had already been to Paris before, I took this part of the trip pretty easy. I just wandered and walked wherever I wanted to go. There were a few things that I wanted to do, some galleries I wanted to see. But otherwise, I just enjoyed my existence. And I feel like that is the best thing that you can do when you're traveling. Like, I don't want to do too much, especially because I had already spent time in London and Copenhagen. I had never seen Monet's water lilies. And I'm so glad that I think I spent two hours in these rooms and it was amazing. I went to this jazz bar I couldn't go to the first time I was in Paris either, but they were playing kind of like country which was not my vibe but I had such delicious food and my favorite thing is just sitting on a terrace and enjoying an espresso and I wish I did that more but it was also really rainy the few days that I was in Paris so I did I did my best I made do the Palen stores were also amazing I wish I bought a bag because my bag was stolen when I came home to Toronto a few weeks later but that's a whole other story I stumbled across this gallery which was also amazing I love this artist and I just wandered in the sunlight. Like, it was so nice to walk around. Back at the hotel, it's just been raining the entire time. When it rains outside, I just want to sleep in. I don't really want to do anything. Like, I don't want to walk around. I'm still feeling a little bit sniffly, too. So I keep blowing my nose. That's why my nose is so red. Hotel Solly. I really enjoyed it. Everyone here is so nice. I'm excited to have a night in the city. I took myself out to a truffle restaurant, it was delicious, and then went to some bars afterwards and just reflected on my trip. I think going into this trip, like I said, I was feeling a little bit lost or stuck. And then after this trip, I've realized that, you know, I'm right where I need to be. There's no rush into getting to like this next chapter in my life or making another big move or big decision. And it really taught me to just live in the moment and appreciate existing and trying to lean into that more so i loved this trip i wish i vlogged better it was honestly really hard to like put all these clips together but i still hope you guys enjoyed anyway i hope this could be a little getaway for you as well there's so much going on in the world i got home and 
I'm excited to see you guys in my next video. I love you so much. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.